Another property of Mobius transforms is that it turns out that every Mobius transform uh, is a combination, um, really it's a composition of dilations, rotations, and um, translations. So let me just tell you a little bit about what I mean by that. So a, uh, a dilation is going to be a map of the form of g of z is, uh, say, kz, where k is a real number. And so if k is, um, in fact, you might as well say k is greater than or equal to 0. It doesn't really matter. But if k is equal to 5, then you're just going to take the function and it's going to blow up by a factor of 5. And if k is equal to 1 half, then everything uh, shrinks by a factor of 2. Um, if k is negative, I guess it uh, flips it in a certain sense, but we don't really need to think about that. Um, so, so anyway, so that's dilations. Rotations are uh, functions where you have uh, g of z is uh, e to the i theta uh, times whatever your original thing is. So rotations are ones where you're going to rotate by theta degrees. Um, and so here, theta we might as well just pick a branch. Let's say it goes from zero to two pi. So those are dilations and rotations. Uh, translations are functions of the form uh, g of z is uh, z plus a. So what you're doing is you're just taking the function and then transforming it by some a units where a is a complex number. So a can be whatever complex number we want. And it turns out that if we put all of these together, oh, and I'm sorry, I forgot one more. There's also inversions. An inversion is a function where uh, you have one over z. So anyway, so it turns out that these are all of the functions that are necessary. These are all kind of the building blocks of uh, linear fractional transformations and, and in particular Mobius transformations. So uh, if c is equal to zero, then you have to do something else. If c is not equal to zero, um, you can write Every Mobius transformation is a composition of these maps in a certain way. The book does it very nicely. It's just a, a uh, it's probably even too much to call it an algebra exercise. You just distribute a few things, check that everything works out and that's fine. So it turns out that everything, every Mobius transformation is a composition of uh, these types of curves. Um, the other fact that I wanted to talk about, okay, so the other fact I wanted to talk about is um, if f, uh, so call this az plus b over cz minus d, uh, cz plus d, is a Mobius transform. So if that's a Mobius transform, then f maps, uh, f is going to map um, circles and lines. to circles and lines. So in other words, what I'm saying is that if you were to take a, a circle as your input and you were to plug that points of, if you were to plug in all the points of a circle into a Mobius transform and then look at what are the outputs that you get, the outputs are gonna be another circle or a line. And likewise, if your inputs are lines, then your outputs are gonna be another circle or a line. Um, and so th this is a, a property of uh, Mobius transforms. So it's a nice geometric property that we'll talk about a little bit going forward. So let's go ahead and let's prove this. And actually I claim that the proof is straightforward for translations, because if you were to take a circle and then move it about the plane, that's still a circle. If you were to dilate that, it would make it a bigger circle, but it's still a circle. Likewise, if you were to have a line and you were to dilate it, it would stretch the line by a certain factor, but it's still gonna be a line. And um, let's see, what's the other one? Oh, if you were to take a circle and rotate it, it's still a circle. If you take a line and rotate it, it's still a line. The only thing that we have to be careful about is inversions. Okay, so uh, this statement is um, I don't want to say obvious. Obvious is a four-letter word in math, uh, but the statement is clear for translations, rotations, and 
Uh, what were the other ones? So translations, rotations, and dilations. Okay, so we need only check. Uh, so we need only check um, inversions. All right. Now, one bit of Calc 2 that I'm sure you all have committed to memory is that if you wanted to come up with a analytic geometry version of a line or a circle, it turns out all lines are circles. are curves of the form, so they're curves of the form ax plus by plus c times x squared plus y squared plus d equals zero, where a, b, c, and d are not all zero. Okay, so where A, B, C, and D are not all zero. In fact, I think we want, uh, let's think about this for just a second. I think we want uh, uh, A, B, and C um, to be non-zero. Okay, so anyway, so where A, B, and C are not all zero. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna take, and I wanna think about what's gonna happen uh, if we were to take a function and, and plug it into an inversion. So let's consider g, and g of z is just going to be 1 over z. And if we can prove that this map 1 over z maps circles and lines to circles and lines, then we're done. Um, and so let's think of z as x plus i, y. And if we look at g of x plus i, y, that's going to be 1 over x plus i, y, and multiplying by the conjugate, we're multiplying by x minus i y over x minus i y. That's going to be x minus uh, i y over the quantity x squared plus y squared. Um, and so what we can do is we can think of g. Let me make sure I have this right. We can think of g as being. Um, yeah, we can think of g as having a, a u in v. So this is going to be. Let's write it this way first. This is going to be x over x squared plus y squared plus, uh, or rather, minus i times y over x squared plus y squared. So this is going to be our u plus i v. And notice that x and y satisfy that equation. And what we can do is we can check, uh, if we were to look at this, uh, we can check that uh, if we were to have a times u minus b times v minus d times u squared plus v squared um, plus c, let's just think about what that's going to be equal to. Um, that's going to be equal to uh, a times u, u is x over x squared plus y squared. Uh, minus b times v, v was uh, minus y over x squared plus y squared, uh, minus d times u squared plus v squared. I'll leave that to you to check that that's also um, 1 over x squared plus y squared uh, plus c. And what we can do is we can factor out the 1 over x squared plus y squared and we're going to be left with, uh, this is ax um, plus by uh, minus d. So do I mean a minus d or do I mean a plus d here? I think I want this to be a plus d. Okay, so that's plus d plus c times x squared plus y squared. So the point here is that we end up getting uh, zero. Uh, and so it turns out that this quantity au minus bv plus d times u squared plus v squared plus c uh, is going to be equal to zero. In other words, uh, so uh, g of z is also a line or a circle. 
Okay, so it turns out that inversions also map lines and circles to lines and circles, and therefore so do all the Mobius transformations for the reasons that we that we laid out above.